Chapter 1. A Great Big Lie. 1415-1619. to Okay, where should we start? We might as well just jump in and begin with the first hater to make racist ideas popular. It was way, way, way back in 1415 when Europeans were busy conquering a bunch of countries. And when they'd conquer a place, they'd capture and enslave people who already lived there, like picking up souvenirs on vacation. Back then, slavery had nothing to do with skin color. Didn't matter what you looked like. It just mattered that you were conquered. Until this hater. A man named Gomes Ianz Gisarada made new ideas about slavery famous. New ideas that did connect slavery to skin color, as well as the idea of making a lot of money by trading enslaved people. How did Zarara do this? Through storytelling. Let's pause. Words matter. Stories matter. Lies matter. They can influence the way we think, what we believe, and how we act. As we continue, pay attention to the way words, stories, and lies do just that. How they influence what we think about people and race and how we act. Let's unpause. Zarara wrote a book, a biography of the life and slave trading of his boss, Prince Henry of Portugal. Zarara wasn't the one actually enslaving or physically attacking Africans. As a matter of fact, he was on the sidelines. But he wrote the story, so he made the rules. And he used the story, his messed up fairy tale, to make Prince Henry seem like some kind of good guy. Like his passion for kidnapping and enslaving Africans was something noble instead of something evil. Zarara spoke about owning humans as if they were cool pairs of sneakers. Even though he described Africans as savage animals that needed training, which is definitely not the way we talk about sneakers. So maybe he viewed them as dress shoes. Shiny black things that had to be worn and worn and worn until they break and soften and become comfortable on your feet. And what's worse... He claimed that enslaving Africans was a mission from God. God? Can you believe that? And that it was the Europeans' duty to civilize and tame them, to teach them Christianity in order to save their wretched souls. Over time, these racist lies would begin to convince even some African people that they weren't as good as white people. Zarara was the first person to write about and defend black human ownership. And his book, which was a hit, planted false, anti-black, racist ideas in a lot of Europeans' minds. It didn't take long for those ideas to seep in and stick. After Zarara's ridiculous lie, other Europeans followed in his racist footsteps to spread their own racist ideas to justify slavery copycats. Some decided that Africans were inferior, less than human, and were black simply because the weather in Africa is hot, and that if they lived in colder temperatures, they would become white. Ridiculous. One English writer said blackness was a curse by God. Also ridiculous. More nonsense ideas were that because Africans were cursed, they needed to be enslaved in order for that curse to be lifted, and that the relationship between enslaved people and their enslavers was kind and loving, more like children and their parents. Definitely ridiculous. These ideas were attempts to paint a fake picture about the terrible experience for human beings who were forced into slavery. All so that white enslavers felt better about enslaving black people. And when Europeans took over the land that they'd later call America, they brought all of these ridiculous, fool-headed, hair-brained ideas with them.